Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. This weekend I'm checking out a couple of games that I'm a little bit late to, although Against the Storm just released into its full 1.0 uh, release. But it's been out in early access forms for uh, quite a while, and it's always been on my radar, just could never find the time for it. But uh, here we are to check things out. This is a game that's published by Hooded Horse, and in, in full transparency, this is not a sponsored video, uh, but the game that I've been working on for the past year and a half, two years now, called Every Day We Fight, is uh, also being published soon by Hooded Horse, when we just signed to them a couple months ago. So really pumped about that. And uh, I love most of their games, so it's pretty cool overlap. Uh, but Against the Storm has been the talk of the town for quite a while. So I'm stoked to try it out. And I hope you guys are stoked. So I'm going in here blind. I'm literally, I just booted the it. The world is plagued by Let's the go. Light Storm. A vile cycle of destruction, ravaging everything in its path. The only safe haven is the smoldering city where the mysterious Scorched Queen reigns. You are one of her viceroys, a pioneer sent into the wilds, tasked with establishing new settlements and acquiring valuable resources for the crown. Your goal is to help rebuild the smoldering city and secure the future of the Queen's subjects. I'm all down for helping. Okay. Neglecting your village will increase the Queen's impatience and bring her wrath upon you. Don't want that, clearly. Fulfilling your duties will increase the town's reputation, unlock new buildings, and eventually bring you to victory. Now, choose a new blueprint. Select the crown icon below. Choose new building as a reward for earning more reputation points. So the woodcutter's camp. Starting point for woodcutters going out into the wild to cut down trees. Yep. Each expedition starts with only a few essential blueprints. More will be given to you as you gain reputation points. Now pick the woodcutter's camp. Yeah, that's fine. Press space to resume. Okay, so we're on a bit of a time situation here. Build a woodcutter's camp and explore the forest. You have to keep the fire going at all times. Winning and losing. In Against the Storm, you build not one, but many settlements to successfully establish a town, and therefore win a run, need to collect enough reputation points to fill the entire reputation bar, blue. It's important to do this before the queen's impatience, red, reaches its maximum. If the queen loses her patience, you'll lose. You also lose if all your villages either leave or die. That's no pressure, no pressure at all. What, what's, what could go wrong? What could go wrong? Uh, roads, camps, woodcutters camp. Okay. Well, there's a lot of wood to be cut. Let's put it here. I'm sure at some point I'm going to learn why things are good to place somewhere or not. You know? Can you guys get to uh, building that? What are, we, what are we thinking? What are we thinking? We could speed this up, I suppose. You can set priorities, it looks like. Very cool. Okay. So now... It looks like we can add people here. New orders. What is this? Uh, so we actually need to make two of those and then produce ten wood in the woodcutter's camp. All right. Let's do it. Let's build another one. Uh, we'll rotate it out this way. I don't know if there should be overlap or not, but again, we're just learning. Okay. I have to imagine I'm just putting people in here. I don't know what type of people they are. This guy looks like he should maybe be cutting wood. He's got the little wood symbol. So maybe we do something like that. This worker has a 10% chance of doubling their yield. Proficiency. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's cool. So anybody can work it. It seems. But these guys have proficiency, so they can get that extra. That's very nice. 
Okay. So now we can deliver on our orders. Now our next objective, glades. Cut through the forest to discover two glades. Mark trees for harvest. Okay, so you have some manual control over where they're going. How do we do that? Well, mark trees for harvest. Use F. Useful when trying to carve a path to nearby glades. Hold shift for a smaller marker. Hold control to exclude trees on the edge of glades. Huh. Hold alt to clear marked trees instead. Okay. Let's do this. Let's do this. And let's just see if those are glades. Although you're surrounded almost entirely by a thick forest, there's smaller and bigger glades around your starting location. To establish a successful settlement, you'll have to cut your way through to them. Glades can contain resources, treasures, fertile soil, ruined buildings, and more. Use the tree marking tool, the axe icons, to point your woodcutters to specific areas of the forest they should prioritize. The best rewards come from dangerous or forbidden glades, marked with a skull icon, but these always have at least one dangerous glade event within them, which will require you to deliver certain goods or complete a challenge to complete them. And now, because we hit this bar, we can choose a new blueprint. So shelter, you can accommodate any villager, but won't satisfy the needs for species specific housing. Has to be built near a hearth, can house three residents. Okay, well, let's do that. Okay, very cool. You can see up top our resources here. We can run this a little faster, I think. Three out of five beavers woodcutter. Assign five beavers as woodcutters. Yeah, I need I mean it looks like I need to get more beavers. Oh, I have more. Unless it's pulling from the other place, but... Nope, okay. So maybe that came from the uh, housing? Where can I see? Oh, right here. Beavers are hardworking and honest, but also quite demanding. So I have six of them, and I have three of the humans. And apparently, I have three lizards. Which is awesome. Okay, guys. They're making good progress here. Let's see if we can find some glades. I have a feeling this is going to get sweaty. Like, this is going to be, uh... Things are going to start becoming a big issue. Okay, so there is a glade. So any of these little things must just be a glade. Uh, drizzle wing nest and root deposit. So do we just get that? We have 27 eggs. Uh, Drizzlewing nest. We can set people to gather it. Small trapper's camp. Okay, but I don't think I can build that yet. All I can do is the shelter. So let's get through this glade. And then these guys can just cut whatever, I think. Oh, maybe I should... Maybe I should explore the glades all the time. Okay, what do we have here? Glade events. They are objects found in the forest like abandoned caches, survivor camps, ruins, wild beasts. Some of them are positive, offering goods or new villages, villagers in exchange for a small amount of resources. Others are dangerous, forcing you to act quickly to avoid negative consequences, while also giving you generous rewards should you complete them. Once you select a glade event, the event panel will appear. There you'll be able to find a few different sections. Effects, worker slots, requirements, and rewards. The effect section shows you the possible negative consequences of the event and how much time you have left before they occur. To complete an event, you need to assign workers to it. Choose one of two options. If the event has more than one solution, then select Investigate. Very often, events have more than one way of being solved. Most events offer two different approaches, with each approach having its own requirements, rewards, and so-called working effects. 
Working effects are special conditions that activate once you give the order to investigate an event, like a resolve penalty, a slow debuff, etc. Your goal is to survive these conditions for a set amount of time. After an event has been completed, your workers will deliver the rewards to your warehouse and no negative effects will trigger. Okay. So, let's take a look here. Building destroyed by the storm can be rebuilt or salvaged. Specialization bonus, forest proficiency. Some events can be resolved in more than one way, and each option has different requirements and rewards. Some decisions are marked with special keywords, like empathy. And these, in turn, affect certain perks and orders. So we can rebuild. We would need parts, which I don't have. Or we can salvage. So I guess we're going to choose this option. Oh, interesting. Okay, so this you can change for other stuff if it's got that little symbol. Clay. Reeds. Well, let's leave it for now. Bundle of plant fiber, bundle of coats. Assign workers here. We'll give to these guys. And a human. And we can just dismiss that. But then we have all these other things in here, too. Okay. Order's ready to complete. Let's deliver. Now, we're obviously ahead of where we need to be, so that's a good sign. Next objective is setting up a small forager's camp. A crude version of a specialized camp. It's slower, can only gather from small nodes, can collect. Uh, I'm not sure what that first thing is. Oh, grain, roots, and vegetables. Got it. Produce five vegetables in the building, small forager's camp, and then get giant vegetables. And Queen's Grace. Okay. Well, I love that this this tutorial is very nice. This is so helpful, because I feel like this game is going to get very complex. We're going to pick this. Herbalist camp is idle. Yeah. Um, why is that? Why are they idling? They should be in there, right? We have, we've assigned them. Is it possible that this needs to be cut? Scouts are idle in the herbalist camp. Maybe they're not uh, proper workers. Okay, well, let's build these things. Small foragers camp. Can only gather from small nodes. Let's do this. I might be rapid speeding here, but like, it feels okay. Okay, so these guys have proficiency, it looks like. Mm -hmm. So humans should work in these camps. I don't know why they're idling. Oh, I have to click investigate. Got it. Okay, root deposits there. Now, recipe-wise, five vegetables in small foragers camps. This recipe has a basic efficiency and only allows gathering from small nodes. All right, that's fine. Small foragers camp has no deposits nearby. Okay, so we have mushrooms there, but we need to find grain, roots, and vegetables. Okay, well, that's not great. So that's pretty helpful, actually. When you click on this, look at that. It actually shows you all of these spots. So I actually made this in a bad position, but I can fix that. My layout is going to be wonky until we figure out what needs to be done correctly here. Newcomers are waiting. Okay. Hit me with that. Newcomers. These people have been sent here by the Crown. Which group do you want to stay, Viceroy? The other will continue on to the next settlement. Okay. So we either are choosing more beavers or more humans. And then the associated rewards. Let's take another beaver and a, and a velociraptor. <laughs> Herbalist camp is idle. Going to rest. 
I don't quite get why they're idling. Let's throw a beaver in here. Change things up. Do we have that associated icons? No. What should I do here? I guess maybe we just need to find clay or something. Is that the idea? So let me mark some new things like this. And I'm going to actually set up another camp here. And I guess we can always just move these later. Okay. We do have this order ready to complete. Now we need to build stonecutters camps. They can gather... Okay. So they can gather large and giant resource nodes in addition to small ones. Can collect stone, clay, and sea marrow. Well, let's unlock that. Stonecutters camp. And we have some up here, now that we know what we're looking for. This is beautiful. My layout is not beautiful, but beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Can you interact with objects found in the forest, allocate resources, assign workers, choose rewards, and give orders to investigate. Yeah, so... We just need, we need to get clay, I think, is the problem. I think that's the only issue. So once this is up, and we get the clay, then we could probably use that. Let's put those guys in there. And then let's get more beavers here. So instead of this, uh, where is it? Let's remove the beaver there. More beavers there. And let's get shelter. Okay, so six, seven, and four is our population. Okay, order's ready to complete. I, st I don't know how to get that going. Exploration contract. So are we picking one or the other? Building materials are the foundation of every settlement. Production is 50% quicker in the building. Crude workstation. The Royal Academy wants a detailed map of the region and will supply anyone willing to help. Gain 20 reed and 20 clay for each discovered glade. Okay, so it is an either or. That's good. Um, Stonecutter's camp. We need clay. Okay. Deliver this. Now we need a harvester's camp. Okay, on it. What do we find over here? Small encampment. Welcome new people or send to the citadel? No, let's welcome new people. We'll sign these guys. Clay deposit there too. So it looks like when this completes... Oh, interesting. No builders available. Scouts are idle in the small encampment. Select investigate. And no builders because... Ah, here we go. So I think now that we got that clay in... Now we're good. I think that's what was happening there. We can choose another blueprint. Harvester camp. It's an advanced camp. Can gather large 
and giant resource nodes in addition to small ones. Plant fiber and reeds. Let's tuck this in here. And then we have that deal that we need to cut all these. I'm curious to see what this is. So let's take a threat and see what happens. Logistics. Every building has its own internal storage where the goods is produced, it produces or gathers or temporarily stored. When the internal storage reaches its limit, the goods in it will be transported to the main warehouse by a worker. While transporting, it's important to keep in mind that villagers have a limited carry capacity depending on their profession and active perks. So they might need to walk between their workspace and the main warehouse multiple times. Goods kept in the building's internal storage can be accessed by workers from other production buildings as ingredients for recipes they're working on. If two buildings are close enough and use each other's internal storage, an animated dotted line will be visible between them after selecting one of the buildings. Sometimes deliveries and production might stall for a while because of breaks. Every few minutes, workers will return to a nearby hearth to eat and rest. During a break, they'll consume at least one item of food and try to fulfill all their needs, clothing and services. If a villager has multiple needs tied to complex food, they'll consume more than one meal. Too soon for dangerous glades. Okay. Thank you for telling me. Let's clear that then. And... I guess what we do is, because I don't have the, the population yet, 674, I probably have way too much housing. Let's just deactivate that for now. And here, let's free that up so we can build stuff. So far, so good. So far, so good. Okay, so here's the harvester's camp. Let's do that. Coming back here now. Seven, seven, and five in terms of population. So that's good. We'll turn these orders in. Okay, so now I need to make planks in a crude workstation, produce four bricks in the crude workstation, and fabric in crude workstation. Okay, you got it. Crude workstation. So we have buildings, we have worker buildings, we have industry buildings, city buildings. It's gonna be food production. Oh, here's those dotted lines. So we probably want this connecting to all of our important stuff. Although, just being in the warehouse is probably fine too. I don't love the placement here, but it'll work. Once in a while, you can welcome a new group of villagers. Don't let them wait too long. Yeah, so how do I do that? How do I, how do I see them? Don't wait too long. Do I see them somewhere? Oh, here, right, okay. Let's get a little variety pack. So that's just up here, newcomers. Got it, got it, got it. Crude workstation. Let's do... It doesn't seem to be any bonuses. So I think I can just put whoever in here. And we need planks, bricks, and fabric. So let's not make any pipes. deadly. Man, I feel like everything's going pretty well. No real concerns or issues here. May as well also mark that one. It looks like our starting area is quite small here, so cool. It's a very cozy little game. It looks great. Sounds great. Tutorial so far is... Fan frickin' tastic. I love a good tutorial. If you guys have been around the channel for a long time, you're gonna know. Clearance you your two. Next storm in two minutes. Alright. Alright. 
I'm thinking that maybe I should move this now. Move that up there. I'll move this a little closer. And this. That little area, like, I imagine that's the only spot where they'll cut. And then they'll prioritize these things, right? So we need the, enough clay, so I also gotta make sure we still have things here for them to do, but if I move this, then I can hit all of that. This is fine. There's some additional stuff down there. All good. And I'm going to move this. Just so it's in a bit of a cleaner position. Colby Munch Branch. Havu nip Nibble. Oh, I thought it said Nipple Bark. It, it didn't. It didn't say that. Although that would be sick. Okay, we're almost done. So, I don't need bricks anymore. I mean, I'll always have them working, but I want them to prioritize these things. So, we're reaching the first thing here of the Queen's Impatience, it looks like. Any planks? Can I see how much wood we have? A lot. We're gonna be done here in a second. Okay. So I'll turn these all on right now and they can kind of make whatever. Egg delivery line or fiber delivery line. 15 eggs per minute, plant fiber per minute. Huh, town's prosperity. Choose wisely, won't be able to change it. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Right? I have more, like, plant fiber stuff happening right now, so I think I'll stick with that. Order's ready to complete. And what's the last one? Ancient tablets. Okay, so now it wants me to cut through. That's fine. Change the resources from scrolls to fabric in the ancient shrine found there. And valuable source of knowledge, highly sought after by traders and the queen herself. They can be found in dangerous or forbidden glades. Okay, well, let's do it to it. Human house, beaver house, or lizard house. Now, what does this add? Choose one of the available blueprints here. Specifically for lizards, has to be built near a hearth. What do I have the most of? Between beavers and humans. Let's pick beavers. Okay. So out here, small encampment, we can welcome new people or send to the citadel for amber, but let's welcome new people here. And here, send to the Citadel. This location is marked as loyalty, so we can gain influence and stuff. Sure, let's try that, just to, just to see what happens. And now, let's cut a path. So I'll move this over. We don't need these done. Uh, so I need planks, which come from here. I think I will build another one of these.
Homeless. Oh man, we got I got a lot of homeless actually. Damn. Uh, we can activate this one again. Beavers will be fine. We just need to give these guys, like, regular housing. Okay. Now, should I stack these? I don't feel like that's a terrible plan. It's just, like, really crammed in there. Options. Fell all trees. Avoid glades. Locked for now. Oh, okay. So you can get into some really flexible things. Like, fell whatever. Don't open any glades. Only do the marked trees. I love that. Love that. Newcomers. Three humans. No, let's, let's keep it varied here. We just need planks for those. Okay, so let's get in here. Let's get like an excess of, of planks going. I'll keep this one kind of doing everything. Hold shift to set a priority for all buildings of this type. Okay. Okay, so this is open. Ancient shrine. Now, there's threats. Disturbing the ruins of the great civilization can have grave consequences. Kills three random villagers. Well, that seems great. Requirements. Scrolls. Planks. Unavailable in this tutorial. Select the icon to change to another resource. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay. So, are these the people that are going to get killed? It does say three random. This effect will trigger if the event isn't completed in time. Got it. Missing one or more materials required to complete the event. So, let's see. Do we have... Let's turn this stuff off. Where can I just see my overall, like, how much fabric and stuff I have? Like, if I click here... Okay, I can see it here. Can lock it. You, oh! Oh, that's nice. Okay, you can track it in here. Planks. So that's what we need. Tracked goods. I just really, really, really need planks. Okay. And I have 30 seconds to do this, which is a little problematic, it seems. So I went a little ham on the old trees here. Let's deactivate this. Can I actually just destroy that? Refund one plank. Yep. Okay, ancient shrine is idle. Scouts are in it. No orders to investigate were given, but we have this now. So, investigate. We might be late. Yeah, okay. Look at this. That is so cool! We had the right idea, but we just couldn't get our stuff there in time. Lizard builder died. Human forager died. Craftsman died. Wow, that's sick. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. So if you don't do it now in five more minutes, dead again. Now, am I bringing in enough plant fiber here? That's maybe something else I should be tracking. OK. 
Okay, that's good. So speaking of, we can move this. Those people they killed could be problematic, yep. Let's turn the fabric on now as well. Planks and fabric. Yeah, I'm, it's so chill. It's I'm just full. I'm fully like lulled in here, man. Here we go. Now I need an ancient tablet. He's got it. He's bringing it back to the warehouse. She should be happy. Settlement complete. Village has been secure, but there's one more test of your skills. Oh boy. What the heck does this mean? Whoa. Okay. Villagers with low resolve will start leaving, increasing the queen's impatience. Keeping resolve exceptionally high will grant passive reputation over time. Sacred pyre, average bonuses. Sa satisfying your village's needs will, with complex food, homes, and services will increase their resolve. Each species has a different mix of needs. It's hard to please everyone all the time. And so you probably want to specialize in types. Farmers can plant only on farm fields, and those can only be built on fertile soil. Crops are planted in the first season, drizzle, and harvested during the second season, clearance. Build a farm, harvest grain, and serve some ale in the tavern. Amazing. Guys, this is very, this is very cool. Gain reputation by successfully completing orders, exploring your surroundings, or keeping the villagers happy. Orders are very straightforward. You always get at least one reputation point for completing them. Gain reputation for villagers' well-being. You have to increase their resolve so that it teaches or reaches the reputation threshold indicated by a blue line on the resolve bar. After that, they'll start generating reputation points passively. With time, your villagers will become accustomed to their living conditions and the reputation threshold will increase, forcing you to satisfy more complex needs. To acquire reputation from exploring, you have to cut your way through the forest to dangerous or forbidden glades and complete the glade events located there. But beware, these events can be challenging at times or might require you to deliver special resources to complete them. Some perks or goods bought from traders can also increase your reputation. Okay, guys, wow, this is sick. I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Looks like the map's a little bit bigger. I don't know if it's like... Like, we're... This is obviously still tutorializing us, right? Um, but then the actual gameplay loop... Is it just like you spawn into a randomly generated zone like this? And then you have to do the strategy to figure out how to complete it? Is that the idea? I don't know, but I'm curious to find out. Uh, let me know what you guys think, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye for now.